Go ahead, let's create a new scene. Um, browse to where we want to go, which for me is going to be here in my OneDrive. I'm going to go to my cartoons. So let's go to Andrew Cartoons. We're going to select this as our folder. Our new scene, we're going to call Andrew Cartoons Stage 22. And thinking I want to do some 4K. Easier to go down than to go up. So let's create that scene. That's interesting, went to the wrong monetaire. All right, here we go, bringing it up here. I wonder if this reset all my stuff. It looks like it did actually, because now I have this bar going on, which I do not want. And because I'm left-handed, I don't like having to like reach my arm all the way over here. So what we're gonna do, this over here, I'm gonna move this over here, move the library over here, my color, underneath it and my node view onto the color. So it's all kind of in the same spots. The other thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna move the timeline and node library directly under the stage because I don't feel like I really need the timeline going all the way over. So I've reset up my desk space and we can come here. Let's go to Windows Workspace, save workspace as. Let's, uh, you know, Andrew underscore workspace underscore oh one all right so there's my workspace uh to begin with okay a couple things uh housekeeping things we're going to do so first let's go to preferences starting with we'll start with our basic compositing cutout paperless animation rigging yeah i guess if you're doing different stuff you can have different all right, we're going to auto save, save scene automatically, interval minutes 10, inactivity seconds 1. We are going to default to element palette lists. I want elements to be have their own palette lists. Hopefully won't conflict with the scene. Interact with color recovery and color recovery. You know, I'll keep those on for now. I feel like that's something I really want to fool around with. Options, auto apply. That actually is. I know what that actually is. Default value for apply feature in node editor. So I think when you change something in the nodes, it applies it automatically. Snap keyframe, snaps the next keyframe to the current keyframe's value. So it's the same initial and current same initial mark as constant. Not sure what that is. Close previous editors, now I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna do focus on mount, enter. Shortcut zooms on mouse, flat toolbar, which will require a relaunch. Use dark style sheet requires a relaunch, which I want. Default separate position for pegs. Otherwise, it's path. We'll start with stop motion keyframes, but we can change that, I think, visually here anyway. Undoable selections, 100's fine. Support gestures, default scale factor. Okay. Let's go to camera. Initial animation mode. I want that to be off, actually. And I want wash backgrounds. Out of date previews, I'm not too worried about that. Control points, I'm not worried about that. Use rotation lever, no thank you. This lets you highlight uh, as a bounding box rather than like kind of maybe a drag, lasso drag. So we're gonna leave that off, leave this off. And let's move on to nodes. Show navigator, bottom right, we're all good. Double click on a node, opens the editor. Um, usually it'll just open it when we click on this little yellow box here. Okay, so here's a big thing we need to change, but we can't change it here, which is weird. But line art and color art. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually skip ahead here to advanced, and we're going to click support overlay and underlay, advanced display, advanced palette lists, advanced element mode, auto rename elements, enable now little mouse button pans view. Yeah, let's do that. Follow node parenting for no one using select parent command for layers. We're looking for current time node nodes higher. We will, that's a command. Select parents. Well, we'll leave that for now unless we decide we need to do it. Allow Unicode names. Enable support a relaxed environment, job scene, drawing panels where Unicode characters are accepted. Now we're going to leave that. leave that going. Okay. Exposure sheet. Let's go center on current frame and show selection. We could use current frame as drawing frame. 
as drawing name. So each time we create it, if it's on frame 30, it would call it 30. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about this. For, we end up, I end up changing those a lot anyway. Light table, shade, light table, shade, and camera view. Enable onion skin for other elements. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. Colored, we'll leave all these at defaults. Brush size cursor, I like. Synchronize erasure and brush, no. Create new color palettes using default color, no. Default multi-wheel, yes. Sticky eyedropper, no. Desk location, this is the default thumbnail view location in the drawing view. I don't know what this means. Pencil line opacities, zero. Morphing quality, 0.2. Zoom, enable paper zoom. Enables physically realistic zooming mode. Yeah, I'm going to keep it off for a minute, and I'm going to see... And that's something I think we can play with. Show groups, effects, show sound. We're going to reduce indentation. We are not always going to display in connected nodes because that's we'll disconnect the nodes if we don't want to see them. Overrate exposures and keyframes during drag and drop. Enable sliding behavior in timeline and next sheet. Um, I'm going to leave that for now. Templates. We drag and drop. Always create new drawings. Copy palettes if they do not exist. Link to original palettes kind of wanted to come up with this whole thing of a way I could link to palettes, but I'm just going to leave this as it is. Analog sound scrubbing will turn on, but we can turn that on and off uh, up here at the top left. OpenGL, I'm going to leave as is. Render, I'm going to leave as is. If I wanted to do a disk cache, I could point it here. Uh, we already came to advanced. I'm not going to worry about deformation. not going to worry about particles. All right, I'm going to click OK. Now... We'll save this file, and I will show you what that does. Okay, so here's our cartoon stage. It makes a whole lot of files that I don't think I need. <laughs> so what's interesting to see is let's see what happens when we close this. So in theory, what should happen is these two files should, like those are the temporary files. That's why they have that squiggly squiggly. Those two files should leave. We go into elements, we have our drawing, and our drawing has a palette library, and it's going to have all of our elements in there. Environments, I don't think I ever use this. Um, I think this is more for sharing between like big projects. Uh, frames, this is where it's going to generally render, but we can change that. Jobs, that's again for big jobs, palette library. Right, pencil textures, and this is our stage palette, but we're actually going to get rid of this at some point. So I think this probably will go away, these will go away if I restart the computer, but not going to restart the computer. We open Harmony here. We're going to open Andrew Cartoons Stage 22, which is what we just opened. And we can turn the choose to not show this window at startup. All right, here we go. We're back where we've got the elongated toolbar here that we asked for. And when we come into our drawings now, properties, separate positions. So we have X, Y, and Z as separate things. So if we do 3D path, what we get is we get axis, but these things all key together. So for normal-ish stuff, we want separate. We can scale in fields. We can ignore parent scaling, which means that if I scale something above it, it doesn't affect this. That can get real complicated rotation. Sometimes if you have a master peg, a lot of times you just want to lock that because the scale to just one so you can, you know, one keyframe instead of two but you know if you're squashing and stretching and stuff you can use this um, drawing so now we have art layers overlay line color and underlay and let's go to preferences again here we go so now we have four options instead of the two and i like to change overlay and underlay to bitmaps color space general i want to go to my colors so you can see this clear gray is the same as this clear gray and i'm just going to i think Brighten it just slightly. 